Are you looking for a free self-deployed alternative to GitHub and GitLab? Let's discover Gitty a free open source Git platform to version your projects privately. It includes key features found in popular platforms, such as code hosting, project management with bug tracking and task management, CI-CD support compatible with GitHub Actions, and integrations with their favorite tools. Gitty can be deployed using the official cloud version starting at $9.5 per user per month. You can deploy it yourself for free by following the detailed instructions installation guides in the documentation. Or for a simpler installation, you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy it on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, where we take care of the installation, backups, updates, and maintenance for you. To start using Git on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then deploy my first service, search for Git select, choose between the different cloud providers or the last option is if you already have an existing server you can use Elestio to deploy it. For this video I will choose Hetzner, then you can choose between different regions, service plan based on your needs. Once ready, click on next. You can adjust more advanced settings and choose between different levels of support. The first one is included by default and once you are good hit the create service button. Once the installation is finished, you will receive an email to notify you. Follow the click here to get the password link. You will arrive on Elestio administration dashboard of your Gitty instance. Copy the password into your clipboard with this button and follow the admin UI link for your Git instance. We arrive on the home page of our instance. We have a nice presentation of what it is. So let's start by signing in. Type your email and paste the password from your clipboard and click on sign in. Here we are, we are logged as the super user which is created by default to manage our instance. So maybe we will start by renaming it. So go to profile. There is a very old picture of me because it's using Gravatar which is attached to my email address. So let's click on user details. Edit. I will rename my account, but you can see that you can edit everything for your profile. Let's, for example, add elest.io and update user account. Okay, our account has been updated. We are the super admin account, so we can adjust everything we need, but we will see it later. Now let's open our profile. Our name has correctly been updated. We have a link to LSTO website, perfect, but it's a bit empty. So let's create our first project. On the top right bar, new repository, but depending on if you want to share the whole access publicly, you would be able to create organization. But if your instance will be private within your organization, you can create them at the root level. All right, so I am the owner, but you could assign the organization if you are inside one. Repository name R3F Starter. It's a React 3 Fiber project I have. Visibility, I will keep it public. So I will uncheck this. Description, a starter. React 3 Fiber template. If it is coming from a template, but currently we don't have templates, so we can keep this empty. Then we have the issue labels. If you look at what it is, you have the choice between advanced and default. So these are labels you will be able to use when you create issues. You can edit them later but these are good starting point. I prefer the simple default one. Then based on your project, you might need to add a git ignore, for example, to not include the node models. So let's select node. You can add multiple ones if you want to combine exclusions. A license, perfect. If you have an open source software, I will choose MIT, README, you can choose different ones, but we don't have pre-configured ones, so it will be the default one. Default branch main, perfect, object format, we keep it, and we can say make repository a template. Then create a repository. All right, so we have successfully created our Git repository. If you are familiar to other platforms such as GitHub or GitLab, you can say the interface is quite similar, but the good part is those files are only hosted on your server. Automatically, it created the git ignore, the license file and the readme. We have the preview here of uh, the repository name and the description. 
Now let's add our code inside our repository. You can add them manually with add file, but the common approach is to use your code editor and to push using terminal or directly with the features of your uh, code editor. To do that, you can click on code. Either you copy the code URL and then you just clone the repository address, which is the classical way to do that. But they have this nice option, which is open with, and you have VS Code, VS Codium, or IntelliJ ID. I will choose open with VS Code, and it will try to open Visual Studio Code on my desktop. Perfect. It's asking me where I want to clone the repository. So select as repository destination. And once it's cloned, it's asking me if I want to open it in a new window. So let's do it. Perfect. Right now, we have our repository with the files that we've seen on the Git repository. What I will do is copy files that I have from an existing template. So reveal in Finder to open the location. And I will simply drag and drop the files that I want to replace. So everything except node modules, even the readme, I can keep it. Source, vidconfig, yarn lock, perfect. I paste it here, replace. Okay, I can try the project, so yarn. And then yarn dev to try my project. Let's open it. And okay, we have our cube, we can rotate around. This is my React Refiber template. Now what we want to do is push our updates. So we can see on the left, we have GitHub, or you can run the command here in the terminal, git commit and so on. So we have all those changes, git add, it will add everything. And we can commit our changes. So let's say starting pack commit. And if we want to push, we can run git push or click on sync changes. This action will pull and push to origin slash main. Perfect. Okay. And to be able to do it because it's connect to Gitty, it's asking us our username. So I type my email, then it's asking me my password. You can get it easily from your dashboard. Here we are, paste it, enter, and it's done. If we go back to our project page and reload, do we have the modification? Yes, perfect. One minute ago, seven minutes ago. And we have our readme that has been updated by what I had in my local repository. As you have in GitHub, on the right, you can see the language is used. So main is JavaScript, a few HTML lines and CSS. Okay, so this is one way to push code to our repository, but you can also create pull requests. So let's quickly do some change. For example, the background color let's say black and instead of pushing directly to the main branch we will create a branch based on uh, the main one so fit background color git add git commit change background color and let's push it will ask us to create the branch and then do a pr about it okay now let's reload here and as you have in GitHub, when you create a new branch, you have this option to create a pull request to update the main branch. So to merge into the main branch, what we did in the fit background color, you have here the differences. And if you want to apply it, you can create your pull request, give some details, changing background color, add some labels. So these are the default one we choose. So enhancements, Okay, you have other settings you can set as assignees who, who need to report on that or to approve my PR. And once you're good, create pull request. Perfect. And the pull request is created. So someone can come and do a review of the changes, say what is good, what is wrong, and if it's not approved. And once you are good, back to conversation and create a merge commit, which will merge the branch into the main branch and if we go to code we are on the main branch what we see is if we go to the change we made we have correctly black okay this is when we push code but if you are working in teams you might need to raise issues if it's a library or if or if it's teamwork so you can create a new issue 
it's not working. Worst label ever. Please help. Worst message ever too. Labels, let's say it's a bug. You request some help. You assign it to one of the administrators or if it's in your team, you know who you need to assign it to and you create the issue. If it's something urgent, you can add a time tracker, a due date and some dependencies if it's based on a project you're working on. For better team management, you can use the projects feature. New projects, let's say update v2, let's update this template and you can choose if your project will be empty or if it's using a Kanban or a bug tree age. So let's choose Kanban because we want to create updates and create our project. Here we have the list of projects. Let's open this one and you can see you have a Kanban and inside you can add issues. So like we did earlier, we can create an issue. Uh, update libraries. Again, you can add some labels, some details, create the issue. By default, it will be in the backlog. And as any project management tool, you will be able to drag and drop them in to do, in progress and done when it's approved and done. You also have the major features of the other platforms, such as the release, to give more details about your new version of a library or a project. Wiki to create some documentation pages, some installation guides and activity to see what is going on on the project, how many issues you have, how many merge pull requests, best to track the investment done on the project. This is for this specific repository, but if you go to the home page, you can also have the classical view with this graph where you see all your contributions and a trail of your actions. But it's only me currently, so don't forget to go in the settings. Well, these are the personal settings. So me, what I want is site administration, so admin settings, and to invite the other users. So you can invite them manually, or you can define some authentication sources. I also recommend you to check the documentation, which is useful for features that I didn't talk in this video. For example, here are the webhooks to integrate it with other platforms. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Giti with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.